Okay, now standard precautions, personal protective equipment, if contact with bodily fluids, is what you should have been doing all along anyway. Why I gotta have a special column for it is just to keep life simple. But you learned this day one, that you did not just empty a Foley bag without gloves. You didn't go in there and do trach suctioning without a goggles and a mask and gloves and gown. You didn't do surgery in your uh, ooh, Ugg boots. Okay, you weren't in there like that, was you? I hope not. Okay, so this is just whatever your level of exposure, make your personal protective equipment match it. So it does not make sense for me to put on goggles to empty a Foley. It would make sense for me to give an aerosol treatment with goggles on to an RSV patient. It's whatever your level of exposure is. Protect yourself at all times whenever you might be exposed to bodily fluids. Now, I know you can't relate to this, but it should be happening all the time. So I give you my exposure to bodily fluids that I still can't believe happened. I'm very blessed. I had a patient, and you can't appreciate growing up in the 80s as a, as a nurse uh, because it's such a faraway land for you, but I grew up in the 80s. What was in the 80s? Crack. Crack cocaine. Big time. 90s and 80s, just my whole life involved a lot of patients coming in like this. In particular, it involved a patient who was HIV positive, high on admission on crack. And I am trying to put an IV in her arm because she's bleeding out her 27 weeker. So as I'm trying to put the IV in her arm, she snatches her arm back and sprays my mouth with her HIV infected blood. Yeah. You can imagine I was throwing up, okay? So God is good, I don't have any of this stuff, but I'm telling you, I could have. Because that exposure was so ridiculous. Now, ordinarily, I'm not going to have a mask on starting an IV. So you can't predict all exposures. You can't. But you can predict some. It's, it's just really hard to believe. When I grew up as a nurse, no one wore gloves to do IVs. Yeah, remember? Nobody wore gloves to do IVs. A lot of LPNs sitting here, been in the field a while. Nobody wore gloves to do IVs. No one wore gloves to uh, draw blood. And the, the thought is, and you're still going to find some old school not wearing gloves, is that I can't feel the vein with them gloves on. Because, you know, at first when we got all the gloves on the units, they were big, bulky, horrible gloves. And it, it's like if you didn't come out of school learning with gloves, you really were at a disadvantage because you learned without. So this was something that we have evolved, okay? We know that you're drawing blood, you're doing all this nonsense, you gotta have some gloves on. Now, standard precautions, the Jay-Z rhyme, HIV, Hep B, B, and C, all STDs like you and me. I put a lot of STDs in here, I didn't fit the new one in, but uh, Zika virus, right? But gonorrhea, chlamydia, trick, herpes and crabs and HPV and syphilis and hepatitis B and C and blah, blah, blah. Okay, those are covered in your renal lecture. I'm not here to talk about crotch rot today, but you know that those are STDs. <laughs> so unless you're sleeping with your patient, you know, you should be okay in terms of covering it up normally. Now, I do want to draw your attention to hepatitis B and C because the CDC guidelines considers those STDs and you were responsible for knowing that. Okay, now we're moving on to this protective precautions, which is the private room. Reverse isolation is the old language that we all used to use. In other words, reverse isolation meant the patient better be worried about you, not the other way around. They can die because you're crazy. You didn't cover up whatever. You came in with the cold or you showed up with a cold sore or something stupid like that. Reverse. You're trying to protect the patient versus you're trying to protect yourself. And these patients are immunosuppressed or at really high risk of an infection. And you know, like with the burn patient, we used to have to you know, really cover up like mummies. So those are some things to think about. Absolute neutrophil count, which is this entry here. Less than 1,500 or less than 1,000 is very, very, very much neutropenic precautions. It's really, really, really at risk. Uh, I don't think I have it in there, but I want you to add it. And that would be a CD4 less than 200. Who is that? 
Doesn't have to be. Don't get too caught up. No, it's definitely not HIV. But don't get too caught up in CD4 is less than 200 just being AIDS. You have a CD4 less than 200 when you get a kidney transplant. You have a CD4 less than 200 when you get a stem cell transplant. You have a CD4 less than 200 when you get any organ transplant. One of the things that you've been exposed to is so much talk involving a CD4 less than 200 and AIDS. You cannot stick those two together exclusively. You have to say CD4 less than 200, anybody immunosuppressed severely immunosuppressed, probably because we did it to them, like the lymphoma patient or something like that, a cancerous uh, situation. Uh, these other people we did it to, right? Bone marrow transplant, stem cell. We did that on purpose. Okay, so you have to be careful. Now we have some interesting things over on the far right-hand side of this board, one of which is hand washing. I always like to see and get an idea of what you think because typically it helps you remember it better. And when I go around the room, it's significant. So how long should you wash your hands? Uh, and don't tell me that damn song. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it in your little head, honey. <laughs> how long should the nurse wash her hands? I can't hear you. 90? 30. 30? Okay. 60 seconds? Did you say six? So? Okay. How many seconds? Or minutes sometimes. What you got, Ma? Don't count that shit. <laughs> Ain't gonna help you. What'd you say, baby? to this lecture before my vets are in the house vets what's the right answer 15, 15 seconds per CDC guidelines now because you are saying 20 and 30 and all this why are you so confused I'll tell you why the lay person needs to wash their hand 20 seconds you and I who do this all day 15 it is on the CDC guidelines. You have to know it. Good one. <laughs> you chose the right number, baby girl. <laughs> I was like, come on now. Choose the wrong one. Uh, so 15 seconds. And quit talking about the birthday song. Shit ain't on no test. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> All right. Now, how long should we use hand sanitizer? <laughs> Boom. That's got gotcha. you. Till it dries. Don't be on the test. I'm on seconds. It's until it dries. Uh-oh, wait a minute now. Hand sanitizer is not effective against all things. What are those things it's not effective against? C. diff and MRSA. There was a huge, huge fine for one of the hand sanitizers because they advertised that they were effective against MRSA. They paid millions. You can't falsely advertise. We have a school of nursing closed for that, right, ITT? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They were allegedly using some false advertisement and you know, a little bit of things going on. At least that's what was you know, reported. OK, so you got this now. Dedicated equipment. 
you know what I told you. It's got to be disposable or you have to have something where if it's not disposable, such as an IV pole, it's left in the room and after the patient is discharged, it goes to a thorough cleaning. No one can use it. Now, I know you can't appreciate this unless you already work in a hospital, but we are famous. Ooh, we nurses are famous for running in the room, stealing stuff. We have to, we don't have enough equipment. We're running all around stealing shit, right? Okay, fomites. Name some examples. Elevator, button, call bell, stethoscope, telephone. Yep, better know those. And what should we use for the elevator button? Our knuckle or our elbow, because here's what all of you do and you don't even know it. If you were to push the, especially a hospital elevator button, Lord help you. If you were to push that hospital elevator button later down the road, maybe in your car as you adjust your sunglasses, you go like this. Later down the road, you pick up a fry and go like that. It is that simple. Don't push the elevator buttons with your fingers. This right here goes everywhere on your body. Think about it like that. Okay? So fomites, elevator buttons. Uh-oh, what's a fomite that you will see, but unless you want me to come up your street and shank you in your kidney and punch you in your throat, you'll never do. But you'll see it in the field. What's a fomite? What are you going to see in the field that you go, oh, acrylic nails. I send people home for that. Because if you really love people, you'll choose to save a life instead of being top model. Otherwise, like the doc said, keep, keep it moving. Because if you care more about your nails than you do God's people, we're going to have a problem. And acrylic nails are, are repeatedly in research studies as transmitting C. diff and killing premature babies with RSV. Now you'll see, when my nurses come, they'll tell you, I got rid of my nails. They be looking so sad, like it was a dog and shit. <laughs> I got rid of my nails. We had a young lady, I don't know if anybody is here, maybe Janice remembers, somebody may remember. Uh, I bet my baby, um, Bumi may remember, uh, but she was in toe to toe, and she was sitting at one of these seats here. And she, we were talking about the acrylic nails. And she said, I don't see the problem. I said, OK. Because I figure, before I cuss her out, let me try to help her. So I told her, I said, with acrylic nails, you can never get between the acrylic and the nail. But infection can. And now you're going room to room. And I didn't know if I had got her because she had these outward. Not only did she have acrylic nails on, she had those stupid fucking studs on them. Those beads, you know, rhinestones, yeah, like you're a cowboy. <laughs> so she had all that going on. She did. And so when she passed her test, she came in, and I looked. I said, you got rid of your nails. She said, you, you made an impression. I thought about it, and it's not that important. And Shelly... I had my nails for 20 years. I got my nails done every two weeks. It was really hard. I was so proud of her. And UH called me for a reference check the other day. And I said, I'll give you an example of how good she is. I know you guys. I learn you guys. I get to know your names in toe-to-toe. -to -toe, and then I have concrete evidence for who you are when those people call me. Yesterday, they called me on Dan. Dan had AFib. Dan collapsed in the shower from AFib. Dan made it in here still to try to go to school, get this NCLEX thing figured out. Dan had to take time off from studying for NCLEX because of AFib. Dan is the man. How good is Dan the man? As I told the lady yesterday on the phone, I hired him. You guys have to know. They want to know what kind of person you are. What stands between you and 7,000 other applicants. What makes you you? Why do they care to hire you over all these other very qualified people? When you remove your nails, it says a lot because it's hard to do.
If you're going to work with electronic medical records, don't take your nails off. That's stupid. If you're going to work with patients, you have to. You're right at the bedside. You've got to be careful with that. Now, also nurses, we keep our nails very short. If you are someone who is not quite there yet, you're just really freaked out about taking your nails off, I am praying for you because you've got a problem. <laughs> However, you've got to keep them super short because we know long nails and acrylic nails, gel, whatever you want to call it, are fomites. And they are always on every test, no matter if you're a doctor, a nurse, whoever it is, you have to know that acrylic nails are fomites. The worst is the C. diff and the RSV. The worst that they transmit is C. diff and RSV. Now, I have someone who's in your class right now who has two grown-up daughters that wore acrylic nails and were nursing assistants at a long-term care facility, and she brought both of them C. diff home. The problem with that is their mother is a diabetic. So literally, she moved out during that time. They were young, healthy women, 19 and 21. And they spent six months fighting C. diff because they couldn't get rid of their nails. Now, I don't know about you, but I got a grandbaby. You might have a baby. You don't want this crap in your house. What are you, nuts? What are you, crazy? Are you crazy? And peer pressure does work. So if you got a trick near you with acrylic nails after today, tell her ass off. <laughs> Because they sent me somebody to draw labs. I contracted with Quest Labs to have all my lab work done on all my patients. She came in there with them nails. I sent her right back out and drew the blood on every single patient that day. Took me a lot longer to get through 20 some odd patients, but ain't no way in hell you touching my patients because I love them too much. I tell patients, I said on Facebook, when your nurse walks in with acrylic nails, get the fuck out of here. You would never catch a doctor in acrylic nails. Never. They're too educated to go there. Let me know when you see a doctor. You ain't going to see a doctor. Not with no acrylic nails. Oh, no. Oh, my God, no. They spent eight years understanding pathophys. They would never do it. And then you go in there, and you got the AIDS and shit. Crazy. OK. Now, blood spills. <laughs> Hope you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Did my fucking job, huh? Good. All right. <laughs> Hope you're wiggling in your seat there, holding your shit up under your ass. <laughs> Did my job. OK, blood spills, seriously. <laughs> uh, the only thing to get blood spills up is bleach and, of course, the very approved products at your job. But you're going to be doing a lot of home care if you're smart, because it's a tax deduction. Blood spills, bleach. How much bleach? Not straight bleach. And don't try mixing that shit. You'll be in a hospital. Okay, so it's 1 to 10 ratio. That you better know. It's called 1 to 10 ratio of bleach. Let me tell you what it really is. Because as a city councilwoman for the city of South Euclid for 10 years and a nurse, I had to teach my residents what to do after a severe flood. So on the councilwoman's side, I obviously had carte blanche um, approval to talk to residents. On the nurse side, I called the county health department, and we went door to door to teach the very worst flooded areas in my city of South Euclid at the time how to get the residents to sanitize their homes because the floodwaters went up. You have to know I had to do a lot of teaching. So it's one fourth cup of bleach. One fourth cup of bleach and two and one fourth cups of water. So I had to show them with a the measuring cup that I took to every home. I said, You fill this measuring cup up twice, so two cups of water, and then you add one more fourth, so that's nine fourths technically. Okay, so you take all those and then you take one fourth cup of bleach and you put them together. And then you use a mop, and you go all over everywhere. You use a really seriously old wet towel, uh, white towel, you know, how we used to get from the hospitals, car wash towels, we call them. And you wipe off everything. 
Now, in my case, I had, uh, let's see, I don't know, I had five offices in the city, and I had lots of toys for everybody to play with in the waiting rooms. And we took, and this may be something you do, because I didn't do it, of course, my staff did it, but they took, I bought Clorox 2, which is with the bleach, right, guys? And you spray all the toys every night for the next day of clinic. So that's something that you got to know. And then also, when it comes to um, patients that have diarrhea, they're at home, you tell them, not only does it get up blood, but it does wonders for diarrhea. They gotta wipe it with the Clorox 2 or the bleach solution. Uh, what you're trying to remember through all of this is Lysol ain't it. Lysol, Pansol, all this other bullshit y'all be buying. It's not gonna cut it. You need bleach. Bleach is what works for diarrhea and any kind of blood spills, any kind of flooding in your neighborhood. Okay, so you can, uh, your home care nurse, you're gonna have to know that. Probiotics, when we talked about C. diff, and if you've noticed in your medication packet, you should have noticed there's a number one side effect of all antibiotics. What is it? Diarrhea. Diarrhea. So it's not uncommon that we prescribe an uh, antibiotic and we tell the patient to take probiotics with it. Because probiotics builds up your normal flora so that you don't get an infection from this diarrhea that can come with the, the actual antibiotic or the C. diff that can result from the antibiotic. I have a grandson that's allergic to everything. And so depending on what he ate that may have something hidden in it, he can have the diarrhea. So he's always on probiotics. If your child's on probiotics, what have you noticed? How expensive is this? It's not covered by insurance. It's very expensive. So you want to make sure you can, um, you can empathize with the patient about the expense that they may put out. These are the, the, the commercial products. But where is a natural form of uh, probiotics that's not so expensive? Which one did the best marketing? Activia. Remember? Activia. OK, now, you need to know not all yogurts are created equal. If it doesn't say life cultures, it doesn't have probiotics. Watch the, le the wording. Not all yogurts are created equal. There you are with your little goofy yogurt, ain't getting none. Well, some sugar. Okay, so you just got to watch it, okay? Probiotics include lactobacillus, lactobacillus, boulardi, B O U L A R D I, boulardi. Saccharomyces, saccharomyces, those are three examples. 